Hey everybody, welcome to Spill the Novelty, where three girlies shout into the void about our latest book hot takes and obsessions. I'm Abby. I'm Maddie. And I'm Kaylee. And this week we're doing a short episode about our favorite and least favorite reads of 2023. So here is the tea. Alrighty, so here's how this is going to go. We're each going to name our top three favorite books of the year, and then we're going to name our least favorite book of the year hot take. So let's start with number three. Um, I'll go first. So my number three was Serpent in the Wings of the Night by Carissa Broadbent. I think I put one too many Bs in there. Um, (laughs) Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. Um, This probably isn't a surprise. I love that book. Um, If you haven't read that book and you love books like Fourth Wing and One Dark Window and that sort of realm of books and maybe even twilight um i would (laughs) suggest reading this book especially (laughs) twilight (laughs) it's really well written and it's a fast-paced story in the first book um you can also check out our episodes on this duology to hear me and maddie arguing about vincent so yeah yeah i I love this as your number three kaylee i would say this is probably like my honorable mention because i really like this series i had my qualms with it but like to say that it hasn't left my brain is like an understatement. Like I still be thinking about Vincent, you know, like I'm, I'm still hung up on this man and he like has created so many conversations in my life that like even with uh, me and my partner, Brian, we've I've gotten in full discussions to try and explain to him like Vincent is not bad. And he's like, you're insane. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so How many it's moral just been dilemmas. Fun. Yeah, it's just yeah. been just war crimes. Yeah. Great for the, just, just war crimes. Great for the Twilight crowd. Uh, this brought back, mm-hmm. this was, you know, this is adults Twilight. So this was a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. Great voice. Great pick. Okay. Mm-hmm. Snaps all around. Um, for me, my number three was Iron Flame. I know, I know Ooh. there are a certain group of people on Book Talk that are going to be happy to hear that. There are a certain group of people that are going to be pissed. Okay. It's fine. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Okay. I read a lot of good books this year and I'm not trying to claim that like Iron Flame is some literary masterpiece in the fantasy genre, okay? But in terms of raw enjoyment, it was there for me. I loved reading it. I love talking about it. I love mm-hmm. reading the theories and the the what's going to happen and the this and that and the other. So it, it was it for me. It was number three. I, I had a great time. I also couldn't get into like aragon as a kid as a youth so (laughs) as sinful as this is this is kind of like my dragon book okay and like i love dragons but like this i'm like okay this is like these are my dragons so that's where i'm at yeah you have to have a dragon book you have to have Aragon. i i hate to hear that you were not an aragon girly maybe i might have to bully you into revisiting this we don't have to re-enter aragon era um i'm willing well, I liked well, the movie, which everyone who's read Aragon hates when I say, but the movie was a good time. <laughs> I'm just surprised that you put Iron Flame on the list, but not Fourth Wing. That's really interesting to me that mm-hmm. like you liked Iron Flame better than Fourth Wing. I did. Because I liked Fourth Wing better than Iron Flame. So. Yeah. yeah, I liked Iron Flame Petrus. a lot more. I felt like the pacing was really fun, which I know a lot of people hated the pacing. So it's kind of quirky. I don't know. Kind of a hot take. Yeah. It's, you know, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> Hot take. Hot yeah. takes. Um, so my number three was an interesting pick, one that I wouldn't normally go for, um, but a good example of like when you read it at the right moment. Um, so I read um, A Song for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, which is a cozy little sci-fi novella. Um, and I think it was just one of those things. It I was in need of a cozy read, and this one just hit at the right moment. Um, it's about this robot and a tea monk, like tea that you drink, they go on this little journey together and talk about what it means to be human and just have like this really cute little journey and uh, interaction. And so um, I like literally remember sitting outside, I sat on the porch and like, or like little balcony area and just read this whole thing in one sitting outside. And it was just so relaxing. So anyway, just a fun, I read little, it, fun little read. I read it in January, I think of last year. And yeah. I was at the pool when I read it and it was so, and I think I finished it like at a park or on my porch or something too. Cause it's yeah. very much like makes you want to go outside mm-hmm. and like 
sit with nature. It's a, it's a really beautiful book for anyone looking for a cozy read. It's just like, it, it's very cozy and that's all you're reading for it, you know, is yeah. the coziness. It's not okay. for the plot or anything. So if you're in the mood for something like that, yeah. That's what I did wrong then because I was definitely I tried to read this but I was just like sitting on my couch and I was like I don't understand I did yeah. not I was not in the headspace to receive what was being given to me so yes. maybe I will try yeah. again <laughs> yeah do it outside grab your little cup of tea it's a nice under a tree under a tree <laughs> yeah. yeah you gotta you gotta really lean into it you know you'll get the most out of it if you just go with the vibe so I love that also Abby I thought it was funny how you said it, he's a he's a tea monk like tea that you drink like we know nothing about tea on this podcast. Yeah. Let's build a novel tea. Well, no, to be fair, okay, so no, one hundred percent. But I am recognizing that the term tea monk. If you know nothing about this book, you're like, I'm sorry, did I hear that correctly? Like, let me run that back. Tea monk, monk of tea. <laughs> um, so tea that you drink it is just called a tea monk. But yes, we know we know all about the tea here. Yes. Oh yes, we do. We live we and are- die by the tea. That's true. All right, sweet. Let's move on to number two. So my number two, unsurprisingly, was Fourth Wing. I'll stand by loving Fourth Wing. Um, No notes. If you haven't read Fourth Wing, do it. Would recommend. Yeah. It's worth the hype. It's worth the hype. I'm sorry. Sorry about it. It's worth the hype. She really did that. You listen. Just do it, okay? Just do it. No notes. Um, For me... My number two was A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Um, if you know, you know. Okay. If you listen to the the Book Boys episode, you already know I'm a Kel stan. Okay. He's the love of my life. Um, I also loved the magic system here. It just felt very different to me. Um, something a little, a little unique. Um, the characters were well written. They were, they each actually had dialogue that like if taken out of the book you could match it to the character which is really important to me Mm -hmm. um and also I think this series did a great job of feeling like the main characters were losing the whole time um which is like a Mm -hmm. lost art in fantasy because these bitches be way too overpowered we need to lose we need to have stakes we need to like be up against something that feels impossible for the reader to stay engaged so I think this series did like a really good job at being like these poor these poor bastards you know they're doing their best but they're not doing very well and you love them for it they're so, trying yeah you know it's it's real it's me if i was the main character we would lose simply i don't know but like it's a good time <laughs> so true. relatable i am not that guy i'm not, I'm not that, that guy. guy nope it sounds really good it's on my shelf right now it's on my tbr so i'm definitely gonna read yeah. it at some point i'm super excited to read it yeah i've heard I'm lots excited. about the e schwab so excited the schwab verse (laughs) that's so (laughs) first sounds so gross it does the schwab verse Um, (laughs) oh regret um so my number two was uh the priory the orange tree by samantha shannon um uh this is of course one that i know a lot of people have either kind of read or have heard about and are like that thing looks massive that thing if you hit me with this book i think it would knock me out you know like it's just this (laughs) giant giant book and so i will say i was pretty intimidated it took me like two months to read but i really let myself just absorb it and like take my time with it and um it's an epic fantasy with great female lead characters um a really beautiful sapphic romance incredible world building um normally i hate multiple povs but this is a book that i think really nails it there's one pov i don't like that much but for the most part i like a lot Mm -hmm. of them um and it's just i thought it was a beautiful beautiful book so um it's a commitment to be sure but if you're in the mood to take on a big boy book this year this is a good one to do yeah it's worth it is it. and it has a little bit of romance in it too for romance yeah. readers a good lgbtqia romance so would yeah. recommend totes love it all right so let's see that brings us to number one um so my number one was the drum roll please <laughs> A Day of Call and Night by Samantha Shannon. So this is the prequel to Priory of the Orange Tree. Um, I loved this book. It's so beautifully crafted and the romance was also really beautiful. Um, No notes on this one either. Just an amazing book. If you haven't read it or Priory, you're in for a ride. It's a journey. It took me, both of them took me about a month to read each. Um, And they're not for everyone. Like if you're not, if you're not, 
looking for a large epic fantasy with a lot of POVs to keep track of, a lot of names to keep track of, then it might not be for you. And that's totally cool. But if you're you're in for that journey, you're in the mood for it, then go for it. I love to hear that too, because I've heard, um, I know that we on here have talked about prequels before or just amongst ourselves too. And um, uh, with Priori, like, I think it's such a rare thing to hear that um, a prequel is better than the original. And I feel like I've heard that with Priori and for Priori uh-huh. to be so strong on its own. Like, I'm so excited to read this. Um, so I love that you loved it. Yeah, I need to block out like a season to get through these because yeah. I just feel like I have no right to be in the book talk space without getting like my Priory card, you know, like it, it's it just is the Priory stamp. You know, yeah exactly yeah. so yeah sometime this year i vow i will i will get it done <laughs> nice so, yeah. yeah it's a commitment but it's worth <laughs> it is commitment um okay so my number one um is book lovers by emily henry okay this is Ooh. out of our fantasy realm okay fantasy girlies but stay with me all right stay with me because we're all book lovers so this you'll it's it's in your realm okay even if it's not fantasy it's in your realm it's so good emily henry is a very popular romance writer but she is really great at writing dialogue that will literally have you like laughing out loud as cringe as it sounds and like it's just really funny oh, and engaging well, and- i'm sorry my dog is shaking next to me because she <laughs> loves emily henry too quaking. <laughs> yeah she's quaking um <laughs> it's just really engaging it makes the romance really believable like you understand why the characters like each other why they want to be around each other why they're choosing each other um and if you're familiar with beach read which is another emily henry book my hot take is that this book is beach read but better so if you're going to pick one or the other, pick Book Lovers. I agree. Love it. Yeah. Love the Emily Henry universe. I got into that in 2023 and not a big romance reader, but loved it. Ate it up. Yep. So good choice. Queen. Good choice. Love it. Um, my number one was um, Babel by R.F. Kuang. Um, so it was the first book I read in 2023. And I remember finishing it and immediately telling my fiance and really most of my friends like this is the first book I read this year and it's going to remain my favorite um which tells you oh something fell so sorry <laughs> the pets are um, out today <laughs> um yeah something fell um okay we're good <laughs> anyway um I'm also my cat is also quaking um <laughs> so um it's a fantasy slash dark academia or and historical fiction um that I'll never really stop thinking about um it has a really cool magic system these words that are lost are translation or used as magic, really tight cohort, and just really important historical discussions about race and class that also just made it a good, challenging read to really think about. So I love Babel, ate it up, will not stop talking about it. Abby, I'm not really a dark academia girly, but it sounds like something I might like. So I definitely need to add that to my TBR. Yeah, it sounds so good. But also, Abby, like your list is so intellectual like it's giving academic and i'm just like oh like me i like a book because cute romance you know like, there are important discussions about race and class and i just really no, feel and like- i'm not trying to correct, like i <laughs> no, it's, it's I, awesome i really love Babel for like a lot of different reasons but i also was like an emily henry, henry girly i'm glad that you remind me about that because like i ate that up this year i got into all the fun too so i love I it all love it. i love it for all of it all right, so that brings us to what everyone comes to spill the novelty for, which is our hot takes. So what were our least favorite reads of 2023 and why? Um, I'll go first. So my least favorite read was Trial of the Sun Queen. I don't remember the author. I'd have to look it up. Um, I loathe this book. I do not like it. I think it's it wasn't for me. I'm going to say politely. I, I think it was badly written. But I'll say it just wasn't for me. The story was unoriginal. Um, I don't want to hate on it anymore, but I just, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. You're so nice. I've never heard of it, but now I know. Now I never will. Now I know. Yeah, I simply will not. It It went around on BookTok for a little while. So that's why I read it. Gotcha. Love that for you. Noted. (laughs) Um, For me, my least favorite is also a hot take. BookTok is not going to like. Uh... I, it was neon gods all right it was neon gods um <laughs> there's like a a cult following <laughs> for 
for this book and this series in general and I love that for you guys. Um, this was just not written for me. It's not what I need in a book. Um, if it's super insta love, I found it quite cringe. Um, I'm I'm too into Greek mythology to be integrated in this universe and the way it's presented and how these people are. Um, I get why people like it. This was a DNF for me, and I never looked back. And I just was making this face the whole time I was reading it, like. <laughs> so, that's, as that's someone fun. who read Neon Gods and enjoyed it, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> we have a mutual understanding of each other. Yeah, I, I read it. Um, I had fun with it, but I also understand every criticism that you have for it. And um, yeah, understood. Yeah, <laughs> I have not read it. I probably won't read it because I also don't think that I would like it very much. Um, but. I'm happy for people that, that yeah. like the book. Very yeah, happy I was here for it, but I also understand not being here for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, I'm happy it exists and that she's made lots of money off it, but I will not be consuming the content, respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my least favorite was either um, Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid or God Killer by Hannah Kainer, which if you listen to the episode, you already know. But um, so to be fair about Evidence of the Affair, um, it's a really short novella, honestly, maybe even more akin to a short story. Um, but so it wasn't meant to be really long and immersive, but um, it just, I don't know, just didn't like it. It was a romance. Um, it was these letters between this like couple that was having an affair and it was just... I don't know. Didn't like hmm. it. Weird. Interesting. Um, yeah, it was on Kindle Unlimited and it was short. And I was like, let me get a quick read in. And I did not need to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, God Killer, if you listen to episode, you already know. Um, I don't need to get into that. Um, yeah, check out. Well, yeah, check out the episode, if nothing else. Check out the episode, yeah. not the book. It's a good episode. <laughs> it really is because we all just talk about how much we didn't like a book. It's the, the tea. Time. Yeah, we yeah. talk. It is, it is tea. tea. It's the heart of the podcast, honestly. Yes, it is the T to be sure. Incredible. So, those are mine. <laughs> those are those are those are hers. Those are ours. Um, <laughs> if everyone has said their piece, that's all the tea we have on our favorite reads of 2023. So, a short and sweet episode um, for you to fill out your TBR for the year. Um, and then next week, we're spilling the tea on One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. Um, so read along with us while we see if it lives up to the hype. We are very excited to get through that. Um, you can also stay up to date with the latest tea on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube by following us at, at Spill the Novel Tea on all of the things. Um, and while you're there, please let us know what was your favorite and least favorite read of 2023. We want to see where we align. What did we miss? You know, we might have missed something. Um, so we can't wait to hear from you. So. That's it for us. We will see you next week.